Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 5G Symposium today, organized by the Federation of Hong Kong Industries and the Hong Kong Electronics Industry Council. I'm the MC of today. My name is Man Lee. Welcome. To kick off the symposium, may I now invite Mr. Steve Chong, Chairman of Hong Kong Electronics Industry Council, to deliver the welcome speech. Mr. Chong, please. Mr. Elfacid, distinguished speakers, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome all you to this 5G symposium organized by Federation of Hong Kong Industries and Hong Kong Electronic Industrial Council. 5G promises lightning fast speed incredible low latencies, and the capacity of carry massive number of connection. Hong Kong is now actively preparing for the rollout of the 5G networks in various funds, including the supply of spectrum, support of technical trial, and implementation of facilitation measures. It is predictable that 5G would be the dynamics of electronic industries. To keep abreast of rapid development of 5G, all the industrial players should equip knowledge on the transformative new technology and seek new knowledge opportunity and business opportunity. Assisting the electronic industry to tap into the full potential of the 5G and cope with Challenges behind the Federation and HKEIC has launched a project funded by Trade and Industry Organization Support Fund of TID to serve the electronic industries and other related industries as well. Being the kickoff events of this project, this symposium acts as a crucial platform to gather all the interest parties and counterparts in this industry together for sharing and exchanging ideas. Today, I'm glad to see that we have more than 120 industrial experts, professionals joining our first 5G symposium. Our distinguished speakers will give us insights on the different aspects. I would like to take this opportunity to, con to convert my sincere appreciation to our guest of honor today, Mr. Elvisit, for coming and sharing with us at this meaningful symposium of our industries. Thank you, Elva. <laughs> also, I would like to express, express my gratitude to our venue sponsor, Hong Kong Science and Technology Park for this support to industries. These symposiums are fully supported by our collaborating organizations, Hong Kong Electronics and Technology Association, HKETA, and Hong Kong Electronic Industries Association Limited, HKEIA. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the contribution of the Project Steering Committee chaired by Chris. The number of steering committee have given this valuable times and advice in implementation. Your dedicated efforts are deeply appreciated. I wish you all have a rewarding symposium and I believe all our guest speakers will make our day inspiring and steer us toward the journey of the 5G. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chong. Please be seated. We are truly honored to have Mr. Alfred Seed, JP, Secretary for Innovation and Technology, as our guest of honor today. May I now invite Mr. Seed to deliver the speech. Mr. Seed, please. Steve, 
Angelo, Chris, Alfred, <coughs> distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm honored to join you all at Hong Kong Electronics Industry Council 5G Symposium today. Before I go into depth about the frame of this symposium, 5G, let me refresh you with the history of our electronic industry. The first electronic factory in Hong Kong was set up in 1959. And the industry first from 1960s when assembling low-tech transistor radio developed into a considerable scale. Then came the tidal wave in producing integrated circuit boards and semiconductors. In 1980s, the electronic industry in Hong Kong turned over a new page and emerged as the manufacturing center of audiovisual and communication equipment, such as tap recorder, which is probably hard to find in the market now. In 1990s, the success of mainland economic reform and opening attracted a large number of Hong Kong entrepreneurs, particularly manufacturers, to relocate their production lines and activities in the Pearl River Delta region, together with the capital, talent, and management systems. The electronic industry in Hong Kong thus transformed again and focused on R&D activities and high-value added process, for instance, product design and development, etc. Nowadays, Hong Kong's electronic industries remain the territory's largest merchandise export earner accounting for 172% of the total exports in 2020. A substantial portion of this business, largely we exports, are regarded as high-tech products, especially those related to telecommunication equipment, semiconductors, and computer items. At this point, we see another tidal wave is approaching. Industrial 4.0, involves the development of high-value added industries and manufacturing process, which make use of smart production, data analytics, and Internet of Things to increase automation of processes, monitor resources, facilitate smarter business decisions, predict consumer needs more accurately, and optimize inventory to reduce the stock of costs. A truly productive and connected manufacturing environment to complement the development of Industry 4.0, we need faster data speed, higher reliability, and lower end-to-end -end latency, with maximum support to all the connected devices. Enhance the mobile broadband offer a richer experience to users for applications such as virtual and augmented reality, cloud-based services, and 360 video streaming. The capability of connecting a large number of devices simultaneously through the internet provides the necessary support to applications such as smart cities, wearable devices, and infrastructure management. Ultra reliable, low latency communication networks are expected to provide near real time communications for applications such as autonomous vehicles, remote machinery, and mission critical intelligent applications such as remote medical surgery. The deployment of the fifth generation mobile telecommunication in short, 5G, can achieve all this and bring forth many new services and applications across a variety of industrial sectors. The government fully understands the impact of 5G in the industrialization of local electronic industry. Funding support has been provided to R&D projects related to 5G technologies conducted by our universities, research institutes, and local enterprises. Apart from the TID funding mentioned by Chairman Steve before, in the past seven years, the Innovation and Technology Fund supported 56 projects related to 5G technologies in areas such as warehouse logistic application, automation control production, and electronic design automation in cloud or edge computing which involved a total funding of more than 400 million Hong Kong dollars. The groundbreaking features of 5G will definitely be a critical tool in the acceleration of digital transformation across industries, with a view to reducing manpower and enhancing operational efficiency, allowing greater degree of flexibility, mobility, and versatility that is required for Industry 4.0. We are now at the crossroads. And I hope that 
the Hong Kong electronic industry will set a path towards an ambitious 5G technology development and deployment roadmap. I can assure you that, that we stand ready to provide undivided support to the rollout of such promising innovative technologies. Before I close, may I take this opportunity to appeal for your active participation in the upcoming National Native Council general election scheduled for 19 December to unite new NETCO members with capabilities and aspiration to ensure patriots administrating Hong Kong under the improved electoral system. Once again, thanks Hong Kong EIC for organizing this meaningful event. I wish this symposium a great success and fruitful experience for everyone today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Seed. Please stay on the stage. On behalf of the organizer of this symposium, oh, may I now also invite Mr. Steve Chong to come on stage again and present souvenirs with Mr. Alfred Seed to all our guest speakers as a token of appreciation. Mr. Chong, Mr. Seed, please. May we first invite Professor Chang Chi Hao, Director of State Key Laboratory of Terahertz and Minimeters Ways and Chair Professor of Electronic Engineering, City University of Hong Kong to receive the souvenir. Professor Chan, please. Let's take a picture together. Thank you, Professor Chen. Please stay for a group photo in a while. Please stay on the stage. Next, may I invite Dr. Eric Zhang, Chief Technologist of the Communications Technology Division, Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute to receive the souvenir. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Let's take a photo together. Thank you. Dr. Zhang, please stay for a group photo in a while. We are pleased to invite Dr. K. L. Fan, Director of Research and Technology Development and Chief Researcher, Logistic and Supply Chain Multitech R&D Center to come on stage. Thank you, Dr. Fan. Thank you, please stay for a group photo. Next, may I invite Mr. George Lee, Director of Marketing and Solution Sales Department of Carrier Business Group, Huawei Hong Kong Representative Office, to receive the souvenir. Mr. Lee, please. Let's smile and take a picture together. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Please stay on stage. Last but not least, we're glad to invite Mr. Sam Lam, Business Development Manager of China Mobile Hong Kong, to come on stage and receive the souvenir. Mr. Lam, please. Let's take a photo together. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Please stay on stage. May I now also invite Mr. Alfred Ng, Vice Chairman of HKEIC. Mr. Christopher Tse, Project Chairman of the Symposium and Honorary Vice President of HKEIC. Engineer Professor Andrew Young. Mr. Herbert Ng, Project Committee Members of Symposium to join us for a group photo. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm sure you will have a very fruitful day with us. Let's say cheese and take a group photo together. Smile together. Even if we're wearing a mask, I'm sure we can see your smile. Thank you, one more. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone of you. Please proceed to the floor and take a seat. May Mr. Christopher Tse please stay and give us a brief introduction of speakers. Mr. Tse, please.
uh, good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Alfred Seed, uh, Mr. Steve Chong, ladies and gentlemen. It's our great honor to have five technical and marketing experts as the featured speakers for this symposium. All of them are from leading local institutes and global telecommunications companies. In the first part of presentation, we will focus on 5G development and opportunities to electronics industry. For our first presentation, from antennas to Christmas, Professor Chen Chi Hao from City University of Hong Kong will talk about opportunities and challenges in the development of 5G and 6G antennas. We will then move to another hot topic, 5G ecosystem and opportunities in Hong Kong, shared by Dr. Eric Zhang from Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute. He will talk about upcoming 5G new technology trends and opportunities in Hong Kong and GPA. I'm sure all of you would agree that the e-commerce is driving huge demand for new high-value smart warehouse facilities. Dr. K.L. Fan from Logistic and Supply Chain Multitech R&D Center is going to present smart warehouse using 5G. To understand how 5G bring about changes for traditional warehousing practices and make smart warehouses a much more common feature in the transport industry. In part, in part two, we will focus on 5G market opportunities and the value 5G bring to the commercial world, especially the electronics sector. Mr. George Lee from Huawei possesses rich experience in marketing and solution sales. He will introduce us how 5G inspires new value to accelerate industry digitization. Our last speaker, Mr. Sam Lam from China Mobile Hong Kong, will give SMEs and startups some tips on promoting 5G and IoT application by presenting the topic on how 5G technology transforms SME. He will also share his insights on smart city. To encourage more interactions and exchange between the audience and the speakers, two panel discussions and networking break will be arranged. If you have any question after hearing the presentation, please, raise your hands during the panel discussion or feel free to come to us and chit chat during the break time. I hope you all will find today's symposium highly rewarding. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Se. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, today's presentation is about to begin. We're going to have three speakers in the first section. And then we'll have a panel discussion and a Q&A section. As mentioned by Mr. Tse, please feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions. We'll pass the mic to you. And I'm sure after listening to our speaker sharing, you'll have a lot of questions and would like to interact with our speakers. So don't be shy and raise your hand if you want to ask any questions. As a courtesy to our speakers, please switch your mobile phone to silent mode during the event. Thank you for your cooperation. So now, let's warmly welcome our first speaker, Professor Chen Chi Hao, Director of State Key Laboratory of Terahertz and Minimeter Race, and Chair Professor of Electronic Engineering, City University of Hong Kong. He will share with us his insights on the topic from antennas to Christmas. Professor Chen, please. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Mr. J, for his uh, kind uh, introductions. And first of all, I would like to um, thank the federations of the Hong Kong Industries and the Hong Kong Electronic Industries Council for inviting me. 
to share with you the exciting antenna research conducted at the State Key Laboratory of Terahertz and Millimeter Wave, City University of Hong Kong. We have accomplished quite a bit in the past year, and we are looking forward to celebrating a relaxing Christmas break in Hong Kong, as we cannot afford the 21-day quarantine if we were to go overseas. Now, you are probably puzzled by the title that I have in my, in my, in, in my presentations. So, to the left, uh, to, whoops, sorry. Uh, to the left here, you can see that um, here is the first, the world first uh, mark zero carbon terminal at Tianjin uh, port. Now, here the delivery truck, if you can see that the blue trucks, they are driverless. Okay? And they are guided by the Beidou satellite navigations and 5G technology. So everything can be controlled remotely. Now, to the, to the right, you can see the supply chain backlog of the Californian coast, seriously affecting the Christmas shopping. So that is the reason why I have that title. So antenna is central to the Beidou and the 5G system. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? US still is very advanced in wireless communications. So here, over there, you can see the SpaceX Starlink system for providing satellite internet services. And the news in Hong Kong also reported that Hong Kong would have its first Starlink project called Golden Bohemia Satellite to build a smart city for the future in the Greater Bay Area. So I guess most of you are not aware of the cloudedness of the satellite in space. So if you go to this uh, website, you can actually see the, all the satellites actually in real time, and they are moving. Okay, and you can see that they are very clouded. And here, are the three countries with the most number of satellites okay, in space, including the US, Russia, and China. So, the almighty antenna appeared not only on satellite, but also on the 787, Boeing 787 aircraft, the iPhone this, is, this one is an iPhone 12, not yet iPhone 13. There's a lot of antenna there, actually, that is also have a millimeter wave radar there, okay, with the antenna in package built in. And over there is the 500-meter spherical telescope in Guizhou, in fact, it is a gigantic antenna. So, you can see that our lab has a world-class antenna team led by Professor K.M. Lok. Professor Lok received his PhD from Hong Kong U, and Professor Leung and Dr. Wong were his PhD students at Chinese University and CTU, respectively. The point I want to make is that universities in Hong Kong can actually educate and train world-class researchers. Okay? So we receive a lot of international awards as well as national awards for our antenna research. So here is the uh, frequency spectrum for wireless communications. And in the old days, of course, we have the 2G, 3G, 40, those are operating at microwave frequencies, okay? For the 5G, not only that, we have continued to use the microwave frequency, but we also have to uh, use the millimeter wave 
uh, frequency so that the data rate uh, can be uh, much uh, faster. Okay, and in the uh, over there 60, okay, when the in the 60, the frequency will be uh, going to hundreds of the gigahertz, okay? So uh, the figure over there shows the atmospheric absorption of the electromagnetic wave, okay? And the, I'm not get used to this uh, pointer, so anyway, you can see that the frequency point over there, whenever you see a dip, that would be the frequency that we would like to use for communication because the air absorption is the smallest, okay? So here are some of the antenna that we have developed in the past 30 years, including the base station antenna for 2G, 3G, and 4Gs. Okay, and we also uh, have developed beta mobile terminal receiving antennas, as well as the SIGB module over there and the 24 gigahertz uh, radar. Okay, now at that time, we did a very good design for the 24 gigahertz radar. But uh, it cannot be uh, basically repeated. Every time we have, a, we have the batch coming back, the performance is uh, off. The reason is at the time, about 15 years ago, the PCB technology is actually not good enough for us to design circuits at millimeter wave uh, frequencies. Now, over there, in 2017, there was an exhibition in Beijing, okay, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Hong Kong SAR establishment. And here are the, uh, basically over there is the premier Li Keqiang and the former and current chief executives of the Hong Kong SAR. But next to them are the, com the antennas that we have developed, okay, for 5G. And we use all kinds of material to develop antenna, including glass as well as water. So you may be surprised that we can actually use water to make an antenna. Now, one of the major inventions of the um, antenna we have, okay, is what we call the magnetoelectric dipole antenna, ME dipole. Okay, this antenna has certain excellent characteristics. That is, they are very wide in bandwidth. If you have a wide bandwidth design, that means if you have fabrication tolerance, if it is off a little bit, it would still would not affect the performance of the antenna. So we have stable radiation pattern over the frequency band and stable gain, and importantly is the low back loop. Okay, the design can be at microwave frequency. If we change in the frequency, we just need to redesign it, but the design concept is the same, and it can also work up to one terahertz. And you can see that the radiation pattern actually does not change when the frequency uh, increases. Now, imagine that why would we think this is a good antenna because you can see that the, most of the energy is radiating in the forward directions. If the antenna is mounted on the wall, you will not be wasting your energy. Or in the future, there will be a lot of on-body electronics and they have antennas. You don't want the antenna to radiate into your body. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why we believe that it is a antenna to be used. In particular, in space, you want the antenna pointing the energy toward the Earth, not raising the energy to the other side of the antenna. Okay? Now, that one was only a single antenna, and this is an array of antenna. The reason why we want to make an array is that all the single, each of the elements will add up their radiation energy so that the antenna gain will be larger. Okay, for the larger antenna gain would translate to a longer transmission distance. Okay, so your servicing range can be, can be larger. And here you can also see that the radiation pattern, again, remain pretty much the same 
across the different frequencies. This is a very nice antenna because it can cover from 56 gigahertz all the way to uh, 770 gigahertz. Now, this is a dual band antenna. Now, the reason why we introduced this is this antenna was, done, was designed actually maybe about eight years ago. In a research, in a university, our research has to be way ahead of the, the, the market. But sometimes it's bad because some of the, our invention, our IP actually expire, but the industry start to use it. So they have very nice product, but we do not gain much financially, but we enjoy the process of invention. So this is one thing we can uh, basically lie to ourselves that this is what a professor uh, is supposed to do. <laughs> Okay, now you can see that this antenna actually can cover two frequency bands. One is the current sub 6G, which is the 5G minimum wave. And the other band that they can cover is the millimeter wave. Okay, we developed this antenna through the use of some of our other inventions, in which we have a filter, okay, separate the two frequency. Okay, now this is something uh, we in invented recently that has a very wide frequency uh, uh, operating range, okay, from 50 to 93 gigahertz, very, very wide bandwidth. And this is what we call a slot antenna, okay? And uh, this is a very simple structure antenna, and the uh, performance is very good. Now, so what are the, some of the challenges? Here we show a new antenna that we designed, okay? You can see that this is at 60 gigahertz at this millimeter wave frequency. Some of the antenna feature, okay, is actually smaller than the uh, tolerance of the fabrications. Currently, uh, it is about 0 0.05 millimeter. Okay, if we send it out for a PCB company to make it for us. So you can see that the first batch, okay, uh, it is quite, quite different from what we designed after the fabrications. And you can see that the bandwidth is actually much narrower than what we want. So in the second uh, attempt, the fabrication is better, okay? And the bandwidth is wider, but it's still not as wide as what we designed it for, okay? So the challenge is how do we uh, improve the fabrication uh, tolerance, okay, for the PCB uh, company? And we also need to look at the conductor loss of the, the metal or the copper and the substrate loss and, and so on. And sometimes it is a multi-layer process. So how do we stack different layers together is another challenge. And we are also working on very interesting uh, antenna. These antenna are basically, we use computer control so that the antenna beam can be going in a different directions. We can change it whatever we like, within from minus 30 to 30 degree, and then in the all s directions. Now, similarly, uh, this is a reflector, okay? Imagine that your signal cannot be directly go into the receiver, so you can have a reflector that can reflect the signal into a different direction of your choice. Or you can actually uh, reflected the beam into different directions, so you can serve different uh, multiple users, okay? And this is the uh, uh, design that we have, making use of some uh, dials and, and so on to do the uh, control. Now, this is a millimeter wave uh, reflector of similar function, but this one, you can actually know exactly where is the, di the directions of the signal coming from. They can actually track the real, uh, real time when you, when you move. We can actually ch check your directions. And at the same time, we can actually refract the field into different direction or a particular direction. We can uh, do this simultaneously. Oh. Sorry, the response is a bit delayed. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now this is for 6G. It works at 300 gigahertz, okay? The difference between this reflector and the previously uh, presented reflector is that at this very high frequency, those devices are not available. Those dials and so on are not uh, uh, available. So we have to use other material, something called a functional material. And we use laser beam 
to change the performance of these uh, devices, okay? And which is not good because uh, it's not convenient. So the challenge is how do we develop new functional material so that we can change its performance, okay? Easily using voltage bias, okay? So this is something that uh, we would like to, to do. And uh, we will look into graphene and liquid crystal. There are some potential materials that we can, we can use for this uh, type of antenna. So we did a lot of 3D uh, focus scanning lens antenna and so on. So we used very inexpensive 3D printer to print out this, this lens. And you can see that with the respective rotation of these two lenses, we can actually scan a two-dimensional space. And if we separate the, the distance between the two lenses, just like a camera, we can make it change the, uh, the depth of the, of the image, okay? So this is something that uh, we, we, we are working on. And similarly, this one, uh, we can actually control the beam so that the beam would not diverge. Normally, the wave will diverge as they propagate. But you can see that this one, the beam will remain the same as it propagate to a certain extent. Okay, so for this kind of antenna up to 300 gigahertz, the challenges are how do we control the material loss of the printing material? And how do we improve the resolutions of the 3D printer? Okay, and when the beam is actually steer away from the center, the spot is actually distorted. It's no longer circular. It may be elliptical. So how can we modify the design so that we can reduce this distortion? And if we can do this, in fact, we know how to do it and we have done it, and we can actually improve the quality of the 3D printing. Now, when the frequency continue to go up, we no longer can use simple approach. We have to research to more complicated fabrication process. In this case, we show the, uh, we, we, we use a clean room technology to, to design this antenna. And this antenna, you can see that it has very nice radiation pattern, as well as high gain, 33.7 dB high gain. And the bandwidth of this antenna is 7%. So as we move on, we come up with different fabrication process to in, improve our antenna. And this antenna make use of quartz, okay? Very, uh, basically uh, low loss uh, silicon. So that we can actually go in the clean room and etch the pattern and that it can have a different performance as we, 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 we try to design. So this is work at one terahertz. And we also make transparent antenna, okay? Here, we use IDO okay, to print the pattern on a piece of uh, uh, quartz, and then uh, we, we can make it as an antenna. And if you put this on a mobile phone, for example, you actually don't see the antenna. Okay? But of course, if for this particular design, the gain is low uh, because that is a trade-off between the uh, transparency of the material as well as its uh, conductivity. So if we use a different approach, for example, in here, we use silver mesh, okay? And pin the pattern on a piece of glass, then we can also make the antenna and the transparency is actually more than 70%. Uh, and the performance of the antennas are good because the gain will be increased. Now here, uh, we can see that we, we are also using uh, glass as, a, as an antenna. This is the glass cover of your watch, okay? So they can make the antenna outside and it is developed by this uh, company actually located in Science Park. And I guess uh, that is an indication that my time is almost up, so I probably will <laughs> skip this. And now we work a lot on the terahertz IC. So you can see that it is a terahertz IC at 322 gigahertz using TSMC 65 nano uh, CMOS technology. And you can see that the beam, again, we can control the beam. At very high frequency, we need to have the alignment between the uh, transmitter and receiver. So if we can automatically tilt the beam, we can receive the maximum power. So I guess uh, you can see that we have done a lot of different IC design, okay, at very high frequency for 6G and beyond. And some of our research work now has the highest radiated power, okay, compared to other similar design. So uh, because of the time, I will, will not go into the detail. And again, this is another IC design. So you can see that um, 
we have different kinds of IC that we have already developed for the future 6G and beyond. And all of these IC actually have the antenna incorporated. And 6G is not only for communication, but also for imaging. And here you can see that we can image a piece of uh, leaves, and if we make use of the technique of time of flight, we can make a 3D images. And you can also see the imaging of the fish, and you can see that at lower frequency, we don't see much of the fish, but when the frequency increases, we can see the view of the fish and all the other fine features. So in summary, uh, although the 5G spectra has not been fully utilized, but we're already working on the basically RF fun end for 6G. And I want to skip all of this, except that at the last one, we can do much more with less resources. This is the Hong Kong spirit. Okay, and I would like to acknowledge the support from the government, ITC, as well as my colleague. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Chan. Please be seated. Coming up next is the presentation delivered by Dr. Eric Zhang, Chief Technologist of the Communications Technology Division, Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute, to deliver his presentation on 5G ecosystem and opportunities in Hong Kong. Dr. Zhang, please. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric. Uh, I'm from Hong Kong Applied uh, Research and in Institute. And I'm here to talk about the 5G ecosystem and some of the opportunity uh, that could be able to enable everyone uh, to have a good business in Hong Kong. So let me go ahead. So before I talk about 5G, uh, I need to talk about what Astri uh, company is doing. So uh, we are a, a government-funded research institute. We are about the largest one in Hong Kong, uh, working on a lot of a, uh, applied research and they are doing the mo major task is actually trying to uh, actually commercializing our uh, IP uh, to ha helping the cu uh, customer to actually develop some products. So we have about like 500 uh, staff, uh, about like uh, uh, they about 70% of them they're having the postgraduate degree, and we have doing a lot of uh, technology transfer. For example, like we have a about 800 technology transfer story, and we have finished a lot of a projects that develop some advanced IP, and about like 900 patents. So, so these are all some of the outcome of what we have. Uh, the major task that we are trying to do is to actually helping to resolve some of the industry ping pong. Uh, in different innovations and technology areas. So, and the other major role for us is trying to get more, uh, uh, how we can build up all this ecosystem on 5G with different company uh, in Hong Kong and in other uh, areas like uh, GBA. And as I said, the, the ecosystem is important for us three. So we do have a lot of support uh, from the Hong Kong government. Uh, having all this funding to develop our own technologies on 5G, and actually we can scale it up for different industry. And we also uh, partner with different uh, universities because they do have all this upstream research, and what we are doing is trying to make it to become a product uh, after uh, getting their, their support. Uh, we also have all these infrastructures uh, support from the Science Park or Cyberport uh, that they can actually uh, recommend quite a lot of enterprise working with us on how we can actually scale our technologies in, in benefiting all the industry. And again, we do have another, uh, uh, it's not like a competitor, but it will be like in other areas of uh, supporting to do another level of the applied research, uh, which is the Hong Kong PC. Uh, we have quite a lot of experience co uh, collaborating with them uh, and on different projects. Okay, so uh, uh, these are some of the records that we have made. Uh, the major, uh, the reason that we can achieve all this uh, award is actually we are helping our customer to develop their own products uh, based on uh, something that is made in in-house uh, technologies in Hong Kong. 
uh, we have uh, consistently having all this Gen uh, Geneva Innovation Award uh, to actually uh, having all this uh, benefiting all this IP uh, that that it, to getting some of the recognition in the industry. Uh, we also have uh, in Hong Kong. There's a lot of awards in the industry working on uh, polarization on on some devices or systems that that we actually working with and ICT award on smart living, mobility, and so on. Apart from Hong Kong, that we also achieving something on the China, uh, international, and other places. So, uh, so Astri, and, and we are a bunch of people that, that doing quite a lot of uh, advanced technologies. Uh, we have about five initiative uh, working uh, related to 5G. They are all related to 5G. For example, like in the smart city, we have some technologies on uh, infrastructures. Uh, in fintech, we have a, quite a lot of technology on cyber security. And health tech is, is uh, that we incorporate some of the AI technologies uh, to, to helping some of the people that uh, with different use cases, for example, on special education needs. And Again, for 5G, people also talk about intelligent manufacturing. We have some solutions uh, working with some of the manufacturer uh, in the GBA area. And again, I think there's a also focus on the IC design. Uh, we, we do have some basic uh, IP and technology to, to help our customer to develop uh, the, the power-related uh, devices or the 5G communication IC devices. <laughs> So come back to 5G. So I think everyone may have your 5G phone and you just think of, oh, 5G, is it still the phone again? Uh, because like uh, you, you, what you have in your daily life uh, is always, uh, you cannot actually uh, give up your, your communication devices. So from 5G, so what, what actually uh, is it giving to everyone uh, on, on, on your daily life? You can see that, uh, for example, you have all these foldable phones or a lot of wearables devices that is coming to help everyone to enhancing their experience on uh, communications. And a lot of operators is already uh, giving rollout the 5G. Uh, and then there are some benchmarking saying, oh, actually, it is much faster than 4G, like five times to 10 times. Uh, even in the uh, US, people are saying it is like 100 times uh, using the, the technology from Professor Chen on the, on the millimeter wave and, and so on. So, so this is actually uh, a, something that is happened today. And people will think that, oh, maybe 5G is more phones and more data. But in fact, uh, 5G uh, is not just about the, the human communications. Uh, it is more about a new revolution of the information technologies. And uh, because when we are actually uh, working with the 3GPP, which is a standard body that defining the 5G standard, uh, they actually put three missions on these uh, technologies. They try to actually uh, say, oh, it has to be something high speed. So, so they, they put this enhanced mobile broadband as a, one of the objective. And you are seeing right now, uh, given this technology enablement, we are seeing some of the uh, innovations is coming. For example, uh, people talking about metaverse, uh, which is really need a kind of a mobile uh, reality, reality that is actually helping people to, to recreate another world uh, of, of, of experience, uh, which we need another uh, widest communication channels. And again, another objective uh, is trying to doing a ultra low latency and uh, ultra reliable and low latency communication, uh, which is also very important to enhancing some of the development on the technology, high tech technologies on autonomous vehicle. So if you do have this type of a vehicle for enhancing the safety, enhancing your living standard, it must to have a very reliable communication as well as with a very low latency such that people would not think that 
the, the autonomous vehicle is dangerous or a very dummy in this whole system. And uh, another objective that uh, 5G will be looking at is on the machine communication. And I think this is also a evolution because uh, 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 right now people talking about all it, uh, device to device communications, uh, uh, human to human, robot to robots, you do have a lot of different places need to be connected and in 5G will be able to support uh, this type of a communication way. So 5G is really changing our life and, and trying to, uh, this is an important area for everyone uh, to, to get a benefit in your future. So these are some of the development right now. Uh, for example, uh, in the airport, we do seeing some autonomous vehicle, uh, AGV, and they trying to delivering some of the luggages that really need a wireless connectivity. And people talking about uh, remote uh, uh, conference and so on. So they, they actually create another world of the working uh, offices that people can start working together uh, with the wireless uh, connectivity. Again, for the manufacturing, people trying to enhance the efficiency and so on. And now people talking about another world that may also need another wireless communication technologies. So as I said, uh, the ecosystem, I think is very important. Uh, you can see it in Hong Kong uh, or in the other regions that actually the, the phone business is just about like 9% of, of the people that we are thinking of on the market of 5G, but they do have a lot of different other use cases like energy, uh, people talk about ESG, then they really need uh, some of the devices, IoT devices to do a lot of statistics and big data that they need to have a connectivity. And manufacturing, as you said, see before, uh, public safety, this is important uh, in, in different countries. And uh, healthcare, trying to do a lot of uh, diagnosis remotely, remote surgery, and so on. They really need a connectivity behind. And like public transportation, automotive, uh, or green. And this, all these different areas, different uh, things, we really need some connectivity. And 5G it will be able to enable uh, all these applications. What we see, these are all the killer apps. So it is not just your phone itself, but you can see a lot of large variety of different space. And because of this is actually quite big market. So we really need a lot of uh, innovations and new ecosystem to working along on different areas. And of course, Astri is, is not doing everything, but we do have uh, our own IP uh, on some of the key technologies inside 5G. And we are also, uh, another mission, try to bring up different business parties together to actually enable some of the uh, values to, on, of all these technologies. So uh, give you one example on this whole new ecosystem. I think uh, Professor Chen has just mentioned the antenna space is a big uh, areas of uh, new innovations and, and new markets. And everyone knows that, for example, in 5G, uh, people in US can enjoy the millimeter wave uh, iPhone, but not in Hong Kong. So as I said, this technology itself is really attractive in nationwide on how we are able to do something in high tech. Uh, because it could actually enhance quite a lot of the channel capacity. So we can do a lot of frequency we use doing beam forming to enhancing the, the, the data rate like 10 times or 100 times uh, with higher frequency range. And, and it can, in R3, we do have all these different components like the IC. Uh, we can do some of the phase shifting and, and do some beam forming. And we are also having some of the uh, partners that they can make a lot of radio radios uh, that to support this millimeter wave range. So, and the other uh, big ecosystem that that people are working on, even like Huawei is also uh, looking into this with Astri as well, is how we can actually having an other new business models on 
on the um, uh, wireless infrastructure technologies. Uh, what you can think of the traditional way of people of thinking uh, infrastructures is actually a back box. Uh, for example, like Huawei, CTE, and Ericsson, Nokia, they, they deliver a base station and put it on the wood top uh, for, for, for providing the 5G coverage. But as you said, there's a lot of different use cases different killer apps on different space. And only particular one bad box could they be able to serve heavy thing. And I think this is not a, a, a most yeah, efficient way to do. And uh, so that's why in the international uh, standard, they're trying to actually disaggregate the original bad box approach by standardizing different interface uh, on hardware and software. So they break it down into two pieces, and they re really rely on an other people that they trying to do system integration on all this, uh, bringing up all this software and hardware system together. So operator will take another role trying to sourcing uh, the, the important pieces from different uh, company to build up their own network. So uh, in this, open architectures, of course, it could open up a lot of new innovation. And those innovations could actually help uh, the uh, all different company to provide different services that to enable different killer apps. So in R3, we have all uh, some of the technology to build up this own whole network. Uh, we have our own uh, baseband unit and also have our own uh, 5G core. You could make it very handy and you can actually uh, deploy it in anywhere uh, for supporting uh, different applications like cloud gaming, uh, enterprise network, uh, vehicle, uh, autonomous vehicle and industry use cases. So a lot of partners is actually uh, uh, can build up this 5G network easily uh, with our solution. Uh, that they can uh, enjoy the, the business behind. So another ecosystem changes in 5G uh, is, is from the CT to IT. So traditional way that CT company like operator, they have their own network, they have their own data center. Uh, but right now, uh, there's a new IT company coming in, for example, like Amazon or Ali Cloud and so on, they are able to also supporting the 5G infrastructure. So we have our own solutions on all this uh, radio and also the base station, uh, as well as uh, the core network side. So we have we can able to put all this 5G software uh, running on the uh, uh, cloud services, and they can provide all these uh, different. Surf surfaces on 5G, for example, like uh, AR, VR, and Metaverse, and so on. So <laughs> this is another big one. Uh, it's to also talking about the uh, uh, autonomous vehicle and uh, safety on driving. Uh, this is also another type of a network that is not just on your phone. So we really need an other low latency communication deployed across Hong Kong, for example. So we work with uh, the transport department to actually uh, deploy a trial network on 40 kilometer trial from Science Park to, to uh, Sartin. And actually we deploy some of the V2X use case uh, around the region to actually help the driver to in enhancing the safety. So, uh, and for, so for all this V2X uh, application, I think the most important area is to enhancing the safety uh, because uh, if you could actually, people's life is actually uh, more variable compared with other things. So technology itself could help uh, all these different uh, uh, safety issues. Go ahead, <laughs> okay. So there are even more. So we work with like uh, Ofka uh, on on actually helping them to uh, uh, regulating different uh, networks of 5G use case. So you see there's a lot of 
uh, different network, they really need certain regulation behind. And we are also closely work with uh, operator like Hong Kong T uh, on these new models and how we can actually uh, create more application behind. And Hong Kong Airport is, is, is the same. Uh, we, we are doing quite a lot of uh, uh, checking and enablement on some of the technology on the third runway. And Professor Chen is also one thing that we are very closely work with on all this P60 research. And, and there's a lot on different use cases. Okay. And uh, again, I think the most important, I think it's not the award, but it will be more like <laughs> we are helping our customer on, on trying to deploy some of our technologies on, like on the silicon, on the system, and on the applications, and even for a larger uh, 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 spaces like in the manufacturing factories. So uh, this is like a one business model on R3. So we do a lot of IP. So some of the IP that is, uh, uh, is actually helping some of the customer to reducing the uh, entry barriers when they come into 5G. So if they want to do something on 5G, they can fund R3 uh, to give them some of the technologies. And, and we, but we cannot do everything. We really need our uh, partners that they can able to make a commercialization on our IP. So there's still a, a lot of projects behind. And that part is actually helping uh, them to actually move to all this overseas uh, business. So Astri is not just uh, ourselves alone, uh, but uh, you can say, see that there's a, in the umbrella of the government support. We do have a lot of different labs, uh, different R&D centers, and different universities that we closely collaborating with. So, so uh, the key of our side, uh, key ex uh, uh, thing that Astri can do is trying to help uh, all these uh, different uh, company to develop their own product, and at the same time working with all these different advanced research uh, people in Hong Kong. Okay, so, so another area is because we do have a new CEO coming, he was the commissioner of GBA, and, and this is actually bringing Astri uh, even more uh, full flow uh, environment is uh, we are now in an expansion uh, on, on the GBA areas. Uh, we have a plan on how we can actually scale up our technologies on how to work with different enterprise uh, in the GBA as well as new universities uh, in the GBA. And we are helping, at the same time, helping uh, the Hong Kong enterprise as well to try to move uh, uh, to enhancing the, the, Hong, the competitiveness of their uh, products to, and then approaching to the opportunity in GBA. So finally, I would like to sum up that uh, we are moving forward this 14 five year plan. Uh, we, we hope Astri could become a technology hub in this uh, Greater Bay areas. Uh, again, like 5G is not just a standard of, uh, of uh, in Hong Kong or in something. It actually is a standard for everyone. And this, of course, you can actually get in this dual circulation happening easily uh, with all these 5G technologies. And we, we are able to actually reducing the entry barriers of uh, the high-tech companies in Science Park. And of course, they may be able to enjoy some of the R&D investment uh, that because of an upgrading technology that from R3. And in R3, they, we also having quite a lot of talents uh, that working on different areas that may be interested for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Please be seated. Let's invite our next presenter, Dr. K.L. Fan, Director of Research and Technology Depart Development and Chief Researcher, Logistic and Supply Chain Multitech R&D Center to deliver the presentation on Smart Warehouse Using 5G. Dr. Fan, please. Okay, let me try this first before I go. Okay, I understand. Oops, sorry. Oops. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, okay, sorry. I apologize for that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. My presentation today is about talking about a uh, warehouse using 5G. Okay, uh, before I joined, before I come here, I was asked myself and uh, how a warehouse relate to logistic industry. Ah, uh, sorry, electronic industry. So then someone told me that, hey, uh, many uh, electronic um, industry in Hong Kong has a warehouse, so you can talk about this. Uh, so your warehouse is very related to a smart warehouse, so it's very related to uh, uh, electronic industry. So that's why I'm coming here today. So I hope you do enjoy my presentation. And uh, yeah, anyway. So anyway, let's talk about uh, a smart house. What is uh, a lot of, there's a lot of, a smart house has been talked about for a few years and many robots and uh, autonomous vehicles being called uh, using in warehouse. And today my presentation is may talk about, I will give you, uh, share with you my sort of experience uh, about developing how to develop different robots or electronic vehicles in warehouse. And also some of them are using 5G, some of them are using standard uh, Wi-Fi. So let's, let's talk about it, let's share with it today. Okay, and as I said, many uh, uh, robots or uh, vehicles, uh, uh, I mean logistic vehicles, are like stackers, forklifts, in, in smart warehouses are having engaged or uh, built in with a lot of sensors. And these sensors need to send out data, a lot of data that send out videos, like cameras, sensors, data. Uh, yeah. And because in the old day we use, uh, in the previous years, we use uh, a Wi-Fi, so they have sometimes to jam by other signals, uh, other Wi-Fi is uh, uh, jammed, or the quality of the image or sensor quality is maybe not good. So that's the reason why we, we turn, we think about using 5G, because I think many presenters, fellow, fellow presenters already said that 5G has a lot of, uh, of good bandwidth and, and a very low latency, so we turn, we think we, we should use the 5G, it's better than using Wi-Fi. And most importantly, in the last point, we shared that we, we were told by many uh, industrialists saying that, hey, we have also facing one problem, is that a uh, shortage of labor, uh, or no young people want to join the industry, uh, which is true. So that's the reason why we, and they asked me whether we, we can think of some robot that can one people, one person can control several robots at the same time, or, or at different time, or at different locations. Okay, so that's the reason why one of my projects, talk about 5G stacker project, is come up. Okay, anyway, let's go, okay. 5G, what 5G can offer, I think many fellow presenters already told that, that uh, say that uh, it is a uh, very good uh, data array and low latency, so this I'm not gonna repeat it. So, it, which is good because when we have automation uh, of a smart warehouse, you have a lot of sensors. You build in a lot of sensors. These sensors need to transmit data. Some, okay, and massive data particularly. And some are, are videos, which is a, a lot of data you need to transmit at the same time. So that's the reason why we, we, 5G can offer this, I think, yeah, for sure. And as I mentioned before, what 5G, uh, which is what, we, what 5G can do is advantages is that because you have a, a very good uh, uh, data array and also uh, less, it's less sensitive to signal jamming problems, as I mentioned before. So that's the reason why we, we would like to use, uh, develop one of the, uh, our robots. Oops, sorry. I keep on like this, okay. Okay, anyway, in Hong Kong, we, we think of, a lot of people also ask me, hey, when you do a, a smart warehouse, this means they're all fully, made, fully automated. It doesn't make, it, it is not this way, because in Hong Kong, I think it's particularly in Hong Kong, we should think of mixed mode rather than a, a fully autonomous mode. So that's reason why in, some, in, in, uh, in my development, many of my robots, some are fully autonomous, but some are actually semi-autonomous or semi-auto. Because we think that in Hong Kong, we, the, a mixed mode is much better than a, a fully autonomous because it's investment, mainly because we, if you have an autonomous warehouse, you have a lot of in infrastructure investment as well, so, which is a little bit put some people off as well. So that's the reason why we, when we do a smart warehouse for Hong Kong, I think we, we will think of a, a mixed mode. So I will show you some development, uh, which is talk about fake mixed mode development in the future. Okay, let's, so how, how does a 5G shape uh, warehouse automation? As I said, I would like to use some use cases. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, again, uh, in terms of the system, we 
we use 5G because uh, it can be, as I mentioned, it can be one to many. So uh, it can monitor different robots at the same time, uh, or different machines at the same time. It can monitor people, assets as well. And also we can install, as I mentioned before, you can install a lot of sensors, which the sensors data will give you a lot of meaning. So to help you to control, to monitor the, the status of the, the, the warehouse, okay? And also it can build in some local intelligence to the robot as well as to global intelligence to the system level, and which is also help a robot to robot interactions. Of course, integration will help, 5G will help to reduce system latency and such and such and improve uh, robot to robot uh, interactions in the future, okay? And also robot to machine interaction, which is, I will share with you was, uh, for example, like vertical logistics, which how robot can ride on lift or e escalators or whatever you call. Okay, so this is the major features. Okay, as I mentioned, we we go into our some of our developments uh, share with you. Okay, so first of all, we talk about uh, a five G stacker. Oh, what is in principle is very short. It's just like a remote control uh, stacker. So like what you when you when you have a kids at home, you buy some. RC car for, for them to play, which is the concept similar. Of course, at the back, the back end is different, okay? But anyway, what you hear is on this side, we have see a control panel, control side, which is have a, a, a handle with four monitors and a computer and a, router, and a 5G router or 5G we call CPE, which is go through, which is control on the control side. And then through the 5G network, we can control multiple uh, stackers or vehicles, okay, in the warehouse or in, in different areas as well. Okay, so in deep in detail, you can see in detail here that a, on the top pictures on, on the left hand side, you can see a control station which go using con through a mobile network to go to a local cell and then through some uh, fiber optics to go to the core network which then control through another similar way to control different stackers or, or vehicles in different area. Okay, this is the more detailed, uh, more, so what it's actually doing in, in behind the, the network, the, the system, the robot. Okay, and then what we have done to the stacker side or to the uh, vehicle is that we, of course we have to add in some uh, uh, campus structure. In this, the, the campus side, we mainly control the motors, the motor drivers, because like for example, you have to control them to move forward, backward, left and right, as well as the forklift up and down. Okay, and then on, in addition to the motor control side, which is through the campus, we also have a, a set of cameras, uh, because we have to have different wheels of the, uh, around the, the stacker or the robot, as well as a two lighter. The two lighter is very important for Detecting safe to, to, to enhancing safety as say with the electronic bumper. So at least someone if touch it or it hit something, it will stop immediately. So through a computer as well as a, a 5G module as well to go out to, 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 to the signal. Okay, so this is the control side. As I already mentioned, the control side is relatively simple. It has a, a, a the controller, the, the, the tilt head, and then also have a where where this, this where is the operator will stand and use. And then the, um, it faces the two uh, uh, mo monitors, which is the display for the four, eight, four wheels, of, uh, which mount the camera wheels from the, from the stacker, from the robot, okay? Oops, sorry. Okay, and we also, I think this, uh, oh, you can see the, the, this is a movie, actually. Okay, you can see we also add in, from the camera, from the uh, controller operator side, you can also have, uh, if you t turn, change the, uh, turning the, the handle, you can, you can see the, there are some lines there, just like the parking assistive line to, to guide the people, to help the, the worker to, to, to show them where the steering as well. Okay. I, think, I think the top part is also, it should be the video on the top part as well. I'm not sure why it's not moving. Maybe the left. Okay, and okay. As I mentioned, we also have a LiDAR to have some safety functions, uh, safety enhancement. So the LiDAR, we have front LiDAR and back LiDAR, they are all 270 degree wide, and then so they cover virtually the all, around, all around the, the vehicle. But we also have some, in the, in the LiDAR side, we also have some uh, distance uh, songing, okay, we call safety songs. Uh, from this side, we have about half meter from the, from the front side, which is we got stop means if anything go in between that distance or with, within that half meter, 
it will stop immediately the robot, the, the vehicle, regardless of the controller operation. And then if the from one me, 1.5 meter to that region, the green region, we call slow down region. That means if anything come across this side or detected in this within this side, this area, it will be slow. The road vehicle will slow down. It, similarly, on the other side, there's a one and a half meter from the slowdown, and but because there's a fog lift uh, in the front, so that the, the distance will be longer for the stop zone as well. So okay, this is the design on the lidar, the use of lidar to attach to these things. To this, okay. Let's see. A, oh, this is another function. We also have a a, a, a laser uh, pointer function to help the workers to to guide or to guide the workers to to lead, to to put the the two fault lift inside into the the pallets so they can see and then lift it. So it is some kind of assistive function to help the workers because they are remotely controlled. Bear in mind they remotely control these things. So they cannot see the real thing. They just through, see through the pictures or through the right videos. So, so you can see, they can, they can do this, this uh, laser marker system to, to, to help them to do the things. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's do the next slide. Okay. Oh. Okay, this is the safety slide. So you can see, oh, a particular point now that the, the operator is, fa is facing that side, they cannot see that someone you know, coming across. And you can see his... He's actually always putting the, the handle down means he's moving. So maybe I can repeat this uh, video again. Hope. Oops, sorry. Uh, can I play this video again? Sorry. Oops. How to play this video again? Sorry. <laughs> Just take, play the devious one. No, no, no. Sorry. This, this one. No, this, this one. I want to replay this one. Ah, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as I said, the operator is still pushing the handle. That means, okay, it's, it's, it, when it detects someone's come across, it slow down and then stop. When it go, when the work, when the person walk across, it will move again. So until the handle move up. Okay, so this is the safety we have enhanced. Uh, we have some lidar safety, using lidar to to enhance safety. Okay, this is, okay. Rather than using a semi control mode, we can also switch it to a fully automatic mode. Uh, Okay, so, so this is just uh, showing you that, that they can simply do an automatic mode. Okay. Okay. And as I mentioned before, we, all, we, can, we can also have, uh, likewise, first previous slides, it can have two, two uh, one, one, as, I, as I mentioned, one key point from the industry is that saying that they, well, they want to have one person to operate multiple uh, stackers or in different sites or different warehouses. So, so in this case, we have developed two, we have used, maybe the, the next slide is much better. Uh, this will show you, on one hand, my, my colleagues is doing, controlling a robot next to him, okay, on one, on one side, but let's finish this first. And then when you finish, you can switch, uh, press a button on the handle, it can switch to control another robot, another vehicles in a remote, in another site. Okay, maybe, you, okay, now it, it goes to switch and then make, uh, I press another switch so that it can switch to another stacker which is located in our in another site okay then you can you can control it this uh, you can see he's controlling another robot in another site okay so he's controlling it as well oh, I think that's it okay okay anyway so um, this is a uh, picture we, in the early this month, I think, uh, early, uh, one of the secretary of uh, Mr. Frank Chen was visiting our booth in one of the exhibition. He's also impressed by our uh, demonstration that you know, uh, my colleague is controlling the, on this side and then controlling a, a vehicle, a robot in, in, uh, in my office in, our, in another site. So he was doing this demo as well. Okay, so anyway. In terms of latency, uh, I think we, so we did some measurements as well uh, during our tests in the lab, and then we find out that the, the 5G latency is about very, much, for sure, it's much faster than Wi-Fi and also the, all those high speed cameras. So that it provides a much stable video streaming, um, you know, control and also control of the uh, vehicles in real time, and also, but for Wi-Fi, sometimes it's jamming, sometimes it's a bit, you know, unstable. And for sure, for the IP cameras, it's really, really delays for that as well. 
Okay, so this is our, okay. Uh, th okay, from here we can, oops. Okay, as I mentioned, the, we have also developed other AGVs uh, uh, in, in the warehouse, for the warehouse in one of the Hong Kong uh, ut public utility companies in North Point. So you can see the, uh, from the top pictures, uh, you can see the AGV is coming out to, to the work, to the worker, so they to, to to the operator, so they can pick up the stuff and then put it into the shelf. And the 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 bottom one is the planner, so we can plan all the all the uh, uh, before we we uh, we can plan the 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 path planning of all the robot, how they move and all the things as well. But one thing I want to share with you here is that because this project has already done for some years, uh, and we were told by the the. Uh, company that the, the efficiency gain or the, the, the gain is about by threefold. That means that it, it was used to be uh, five or six workers working in the warehouse, but when we implement this system, they can down to reduce to, to two person, which is a very, very significant. But anyway, don't worry, we are, they are not firing those people, don't worry about that. They are just assigning those people to other works as well. Because in the warehouse, they have many, many other works, what are just picking the items from the shelf. They have many other, other doc paperwork and other works to, for the people to work. So they really appreciate that by implementing an a, a automatic system in their warehouse, which can give them a significant gain on in terms of uh, efficiency. And also, oh, sorry. We also developed some uh, follow me stackers, which is. Oh, how come the other one is not. Okay. You can see the, the follow me stacker is. is uh, a top picture, you follow a worker in walking around in the, in the warehouse, and again, uh, it, it has a, a control, okay, you turn around in, the, in, tight, in some tight corners, and it also has a, a, a control with, with the, with, in, a, in a glove, so that you can uh, control it manually by the people, so, and they always follow the person, you can see. And, oh, but hang on a minute, why, okay, yes, yeah, I want to talk about safety, so, so you also have some uh, lighter to make sure that, that when someone come out and it won't hit on someone or to some object if okay outside of the area, uh, you can see here they, if the someone suddenly come out and then you can stop. So we also have a lot of lighters for safety to enhance the the, the worker safety. And the bottom one, I'm not sure. Oh, the word bottom. Oh, sorry, really cannot. Okay, the bottom slide. Okay, the bottom slide just showing that uh, when it when it is two two robots ones together, so one follow the other, we call patrolling. So we can we can one in the in the in the warehouse by by two together as well. So in case. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, this one is just purely some someone asked us to do a patrolling robot in a warehouse at night time. So this this actually is a robot. Uh, Patrolling everyone in the, in the middle of the night, every one hour, they will send the pictures to a uh, server, to the op, to the receiver, to the company server, to make sure that no no intruders, no no nothing happened in the in the warehouse. So you send out the pictures in the night time, so you can go around and then avoid obstacles and other things. And and you also in, uh, equipped it with a uh, IR camera, so that at night time you can detect some body hit of people, if in case some intruders or other people. Okay, so anyway, my last few couple of slides talk about us, a smart warehouse using 5G. As I mentioned before, I think in Hong Kong, for Hong Kong warehouses, we really talk about Mixmo. So what is good for using 5G? Because you, have, you can install a lot of sensors, uh, and the sensor can streaming, uh, can massive sensor, there are a lot of data that can go back to the back end, to the, to the, so that they can do a lot of analytics. They can do a lot of system uh, communications and also planning and also tracking of the people as well as robots for interactions. And one final, my final slide is talk about some new building blocks. Uh, uh, I think robot to using 5G technology, I think we can also use, talk about some uh, robot to robot communication which we are working on as well as robot to, any, to other things or everything. How to X using 5G because they have a lot of communication resources and less infrastructure, and most importantly, I think is the analytics part, which a lot of AI can do, a lot of uh, path planning, uh, resource planning can do. I think this is my talk today. I think if I'm yeah.
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fan. Please stay on stage for the panel discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the symposium's highlight, which is the panel discussion. Our moderator will first discuss with the three speakers, then we will open the floor to the audience. So I'm sure after hearing the sharings of uh, three speakers, you have triggered some um, question in your mind, and please feel free to raise your hand and we'll pass your mic for you to interact with our speakers. So now, may I first introduce our moderator, Dr. Alfred Ng, Vice Chairman of HAEIC, together with three speakers, including Professor Chen Chi Hao, Director of Key State Laboratory of Terahertz and Millimeter Waves, and Chair Professor of Electronic Engineering, City University of Hong Kong. Also, Dr. Eric Tung, Chief Technologist of the Communication Technology Division, Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute, as well as Dr. K. L. Fan, Director of Research and Technology Development and Chief Researcher, Logistic and Supply Chain Multitech R&D Center. Now I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Ng to lead the discussion. Dr. Ng, please. Thank you, thank you. So uh, thank you for the speakers. I, I think all three talks are excellent. And uh, I learned a lot from all the free presentations. So I, I think I will ask some questions. We'll start with some questions, maybe first to uh, Professor Chen. So, uh, so from, from your presentation, you are already talking about 6G. While I think a lot of the audience is trying to learn what 5G can do, right? But, uh, but I, I'm very excited that, and, and very exciting to learn that like, CTU you're already looking at 6Gs and doing something that uh, uh, ahead of other researchers. And one thing I, I wanted to know is that uh, in, in 6G with uh, terahertz uh, uh, frequencies, uh, what kind of application we can expect that cannot be done with 5G? Okay, thank you, uh, Alfred. Um, actually, uh, in the 6G, we have to look at the big data, not only in terms of the communications, but also in imaging and transmissions of graphics. Now, graphic meaning that actually in the in 6G, one of the application will be transmissions of 3D holograph. Suppose uh, I'm communicating with Alfred, so your phone may actually uh, take your image into a 3D hologram and use 6G because it can handle large data, and then it will uh, transmit it to my phone, for example, through the of course through a base station. <laughs> okay, then I can actually talk to a avatar of, of, of Alfred <laughs> in real time. So that would be some of the future application that we are expecting. Okay, and of course, uh, there's a lot of work need to be done before we uh, achieve that goal. And this is only one of the applications, yeah. Yeah, I think it's very exciting. I think now Meitao need to also Meitao our face in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> so in the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That, that's good, that's good. And then um, the second question to uh, uh, Eric, right, Dr. Eric Chang. And uh, so you talk a lot about uh, a lot of the exciting technologies, ORAN, and then the smart mobility. Uh, and and I, I think uh, a lot of audience here, they are not uh, big corporate. Uh, and we, we have a lot of SME here. So I, I think the questions for you is that, uh, in Hong Kong, right, or GBA's companies, like SME, so which area we, you think we can focus on to help out in the 5G revolution? Uh, okay, so uh, I think the most important thing in 5G that I just in the, speak in the, in the presentation is actually it enables a lot of different applications as long as you are doing some technologies. So when you are looking into like uh, chip design, then, then you of course you also can leverage the 5G technology for doing the uh, like the communication chips and so on. If you are working on a lot of AI or content or big data, they really uh, also need a means on communication. So so when you are actually trying to upgrade your technology uh, is itself, then it actually you can still leveraging 5G. Uh, to enhancing the value of your company. So I think the SME itself, if you're a high-tech company, 
you, you, you will be always find that uh, there is a common ground that the communication on, on 5G is very important for yourself uh, to upgrade your industry. And that's why we, we have a lot of inquiry from all these different SME, no matter you are working on FinTech, or you are working on big data, AI, uh, and, and other different places, you can still do something on 5G. <laughs> oh, and, and I have a questions, right? Uh, trying to promote S3 too to the audience is, oh. uh, so my understanding is that uh, uh, S3 has developed a lot of technology, right? So and yeah. also CTU and LSEM too. Mm. So is it possible for SME to kind of license the technology has yeah. developed by uh, different research institutes? Yeah, I think uh, we are really open. I think this is the the major objective of R3 uh, on having a, a actually de self-developed technology that is based on uh, the Hong Kong government support and with all these different uh, institute and university to actually enable uh, uh, to help everyone like SME to upgrade your, your existing technologies. I think uh, this is also our goal, so we are pretty open. and. And uh, we are looking forward for everyone. If they are really interested, uh, we are welcome you guys to come to R3. Also, find Alfred Ng because he's also a, a director of R3. <laughs> so, so we, we, we are able to work together uh, on, on bringing up everyone's uh, business uh, in, in this and uh, enjoy the 5G ecosystem. So uh, actually, can can find me for S3, also S LSEM or CTU too. So I <laughs> yes. have connection with all, all of them too. Yeah, th th thank you, uh, Doctor uh, Zhang. Yes. And and the last question to to uh, Doctor Fan, right? So uh, you you mentioned that like five uh, G, um, in in some sense is superior to Wi Fi mm -hmm. in uh, where smart warehouse applications, yeah, yeah. Right? right? But uh, I I think a lot of uh, people will be interested in doing smart uh, warehouse, right? But sure. their question is like, we, we know that, oh, okay, I, I know how to install a Wi-Fi network, right? So in order to do a smart 5G warehouse, uh, is it we rely on the operator, whether they have 5G coverage at the warehouse so that I can use it, or, or it is a, something that uh, a private network that we can do? I think in our case, we, we just use a SIM card, a, a public 5G, because it's, this is more practicable, I think I would say, because uh, of course, you, you can always ask a 5G operator to come to your place and install, uh, build up a, a infrastructure for you, but it, it will be a cost, okay, so significant cost. But, but I think for our case, we use a public uh, SIM card, basically 5G SIM card, uh, to put it inside and then to, to, and then you can see I have some measurements as well, which uh, I've done in our lab. Uh, of course, the truth is that our lab is on a, on a, a high, high level, so it may be a better uh, receiving uh, signal. But anyway, uh, in, uh, we also, when we develop things, we also think about affordability to the company. So that's the reason why we, we think about using public uh, SIM card. So, so it's, it's more cost effective, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess for a company who wants to do that, the first thing they need to buy a 5G SIM card and see whether they get yeah, the yeah, coverage. Yeah, that, that's also true, yes. yes. Okay. But at least the 5 SIM card is much no, it's rather than build up a whole infrastructure for for the yes, yeah. yes, and almost convenience as well. I think was we'll it yeah, flexible as well. Yes, um, and, and I have a follow up question. So w when you talk about um, the goods to people, you mm. said the mixed mode, right? So why why do you think this mode is suitable to Hong Kong in comparison to a fully uh, yeah. autonomous okay, mode? Okay, bear in mind um, we unlike uh, well we did go to overseas. Warehouse, they are very huge. Yeah. You talk about, uh, well, I forgot about how big it is anyway. It's much, much bigger than Hong Kong. In that sense, a fully autonomous uh, warehouse is much more big because uh, think about if you really carry, like, like, like the Hong Kong people, uh, Hong Kong workers, they, they take one hand uh, uh, order form and then go to the shelf and pick up the items, which will be much, much long, longer time and much tiring. I would say much tiring as well, to be honest. But for, for overseas, it's okay for fully autonomous because the, the, the warehouse is really huge. But in Hong Kong, it's not that, uh, comparatively, I would say, it's not that big. So you, I think, the, but, but they also, for some reason, maybe cultural as well, because I have been going to many, many of these uh, uh, warehouses. Uh, they, they, they still, a lot of people still 
get used to, I would say, get used to using a paper format. <laughs> okay, carry one, one hand is carry a, a order form and then on the other hand, grabbing the, the items and putting a trolley in the front of them to pick it up. So that's still, so sometimes cultural is uh, one issue that so they may not change. Of course, but truly, some uh, warehouse people, uh, where, new, new warehouse, especially new warehouse, they want to invest and then make it fully automatic. As, as I said, one, one of the, uh, as I show you, uh, one of the, the public utility company in North Point, they already built, having these systems, and many, I heard that many, many of them are also changing to fully automatic. Yeah, because of one reason, because if they are uh, no uh, labor shortage, one, one, one reason mm -hmm. is labor shortage, and also aging, aging labor as well. Okay, yeah. Great, understand. So now I, I think I will open the uh, questions to the audience. So a anyone want to ask any questions to our speakers? The female at the back. Um, so thanks for the for the talk, and I, I got a question to Professor Chen, because I I saw a lot of very interesting antenna from you on five G and six G, and um, but I, I actually found uh, all of them uh, in the higher band frequency, and I just like to know, do you see in uh, in application level, uh, is there any chance that um, it can be applied for just one or two antenna only to cover the entire 5G spectrum. So you know, um, in the in the cloud day in the IoT small device, you have a lot of uh, limitation on the spacing, a lot of limitation on the on the antenna layout. So if there's a case, if we can just have one or two antenna to cover both the lower band and the higher band for the 5G, that would be I would say awesome for, for the engineering and so for the yeah. entire sourcing. Thank okay, you. thank you for your questions. Uh, I think it's a very good question. Now, in one of the examples that I show, uh, that was done in maybe eight, seven, eight years ago, that we cover both the uh, uh, basically Y5 and Y gig. So it can already cover the 5G, the lower band of the 5G and the upper band of the 6G. In that design, we make use of a filter that we have invented in 1999. So I believe that if we can uh, design another filter that will block certain part of the frequency and then the free different bands of the frequency can be used uh, together. So this is, uh, your, your question is very good. Now that is for a, basically a single element of the antenna. If you try to make it an array, so to improve the gain for different bands, that will be very difficult. So I think partly we can do it if it's a single element for, I think it's, it's okay for the uh, IoT type of applications. But if you need high gain antenna to covering that Y of a frequency spectrum, it is very challenging. Yeah. So uh, any other questions? Well, maybe I can uh, add one of the uh, Question related to uh, Dr. Feng, not a, mm. a question, but a, a comment. Because you use uh, 5G, because you use a commercial mm. uh, 5G system, yeah. but when the, uh, because I rushed through my presentation, so uh, there's something that I, I should uh, state here. Uh, when the 5G signal going through the window, for example, mm. there's a lot of attenuations. Mm. So in the slide that I have, but I was, have no time to give, uh, put in the detail, uh, one of the company here in, 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 in Science Park, uh, they developed this uh, metal lens, which is a very thin beam of structure. They put it on, uh, uh, maybe on the window and so on. It's like a focusing uh, uh, device. Just like when we, in the, when we were young, we used a magnifying glass right, to focus the sunlight and igniting the uh, match stick. It's a similar idea, but you can enhance the hmm the signal quality and the speed. Uh, they have different, two different testing, one enhanced by 1.7 times, the other mm. 1.6 times, the other is 
Oh, great. Um, Thank seven you. Times. Yeah, we, we do face some of these issues. Right. E so actually, in the building, uh, mm -hmm. in, even in uh, our, our office history in, yes. uh, in Science Park, in some part of the, it is complete block, and in some part we have a good signal. So that's yeah, for yeah. Professor's So I, I think uh, different uh, organizations can work yeah. together to solve some of the pro yeah. problems that uh, yeah. we are facing for making use of the 5G. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Professor Chen, uh, you are talking about 6G. That, that is uh, something very excited. Uh, how soon do you think 6G will become? Okay, uh, I think uh, actually it will be sooner than we think. A lot of uh, places are already invest heavily on 6G. For example, I'm, I'm sure Huawei already done it a few years ago. I mean, started research on 6G. And in Finland, uh, in 2018, they already set up a big program, and it's also on my slide, but I didn't talk about it. They just give the money to one single university. It's 250 million euro to a single university for an eight-year program to start defining 60 and uh, build a roadmap and do the research. Okay? So, and I think a few days ago, uh, Samsung already... Uh, collaborated with, uh, I forgot which company, uh, which country to de also develop, uh, or a university rather, to also develop on, on, on 60. I believe that by 2025, there'll be a lot of research, good research already uh, uh, to, uh, to have uh, good results on, on, on 60. So in the past, we think that it will be a long way to go for 60. But uh, it, it actually, we feel that it will come sooner. But we still have to find a killer application, just like the 5G. If we know the killer applications, it will take off. Yeah, I, I think that is what everybody is waiting. <laughs> and uh, the, the, I think uh, if 6G one day comes, uh, all the applications that we are developing now will still be uh, useful, still be yes, uh, yes, uh, usable, it'll I would be say. faster. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but they might have to change the, the, the receiving module. Yeah. But how about the uh, base station, the, the infrastructure? Mm. Now, today, the 5G, we are expecting one base station to have 5 to 20 uh, femtocell or, or, or smaller pickle cells. Mm. How, what would be the, the ratio for, for 6G? Well, I, I, I think we can always use a, a rule of thumb, okay, about 10 times, okay, whatever the speed and so on from different uh, 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 generations. I think it, it's just a guess, okay, mm -hmm. it's a reasonable guess. But because of the uh, very high frequency, the attenuation through air is very high. So you don't expect 6G can, the signal can, can propagate very long distance. Mm -hmm. So you need a much, uh, many more of the 6G base station. Okay, then 5G. So we are talking about, for example, 2G, 3G, they, they can be tens of uh, kilometers. But for 6G, people are talking about 10 meters. <laughs> okay, so that's why the, even for millimeter wave uh, 5G, it still take a while for Hong Kong, for example, to adopt this uh, because of the, inf the cost of the infrastructure is much higher than the previous generations. Yeah, that is a, the distant power and, and, and so on. Yeah. 10 meters is very, very short. The, the warehouse will need a lot of uh, that, a small... That's what I want to... That's maybe I can jump in and supplement R to R and R to X because we need to use those robots or some fixed structures to be an, yes. a somehow base station, you can call yeah. it, <laughs> somehow a low, right. low space right. to, to you know, bridge the gap between the 10, 10 yes. meters distance or even shorter distance. Yes. Yeah. And, and how about the V to X? that we are, we are dreaming of, uh, it might not work <laughs> in 6G. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, so in 6G, I think it is more like a uh, how we can uh, ma make the current technology to become a more mature stage. So in, you, you know that there's a lot of new technologies coming like V2X and, and like a millimeter wave and so on. And all these thing is actually is incubating the, the new generation of a mature technology in 6G. I think you can think of 6G will be having all these components that you, you are happening today. So I think, uh, you, you, as you said, so the base station will be more 
uh, dense uh, in 6G, then of course all this basic research on how we can do this, uh, the, the IP on the base station, for example, uh, is become important. Uh, because you can actually scale it up with, with more devices and more base stations uh, uh, expected in the, in the next 10 years, for example. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit on top of that. Now, that's why in my presentation, and emphasize the antenna gain. Mm -hmm. If your antenna gain is high, then you can transmit the, uh, for a longer distance. And we also, if you look at the way that I present the IC, the IC at the beginning, maybe we, I only have a two by two, Array, and later on is four by four. That is a way that we can combine energy in space through this uh, uh, array of uh, devices. But of course, you cannot make the power getting very big because it will be harmful to, to human. So these are all kinds of uh, considerations that we, we need to think about. Uh, that's why in our lab, we also look at the effect of these 6G signals. How does it affect the cells at the cellular level? So we have a lot of different cells, and we uh, illuminate them with uh, high-frequency signal, and to see which type of cell can actually move faster. <laughs> so they, they, they are all related. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of research for, 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 for us to, to, to play with. I would say I use the word play, <laughs> because we have a lot of fun by doing that. So for Professor Chen, are you going to hire some biochemical engineers or, or scientists? Oh, oh, you, to your in fact, we have lab members who are biologists. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's important, I think. Thank you. Thank you. So I, May I, I ask that's about... Yes. Oh, you May have I a question, ask right? a question, yes. Okay. You know, uh, Professor Chen, you say the, the base station for 6G to the receiver is talking about only 10 meters. So that no, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Now, if we are talking about base station, they can be uh, uh, actually the distance can be longer because you have more space, and you can also use more higher power uh, devices. But for for handset, for example, for mobile device, the the, the distance would be uh, shorter because of the power issue and so on. So when the 6G technology is coming, what do you see the the satellites in a low orbit? Who play in this 60s technology okay, because uh, it seems that yeah, I, people again, are investing uh, a lot yes, on yes. the satellites. Yes, yes. Thank you. I, I, I think a satellite, if they want to downlink a 60 frequency to, to, to Earth, I, I think it'll be difficult because of the air absorption through the atmosphere. But between the satellite, in, in a vacuum space, uh, the attenuations of the high frequency is actually small or, or, or or no, no attenuation. So that is one possibility. For example, within the satellite, how they can, the signal can be com uh, communicated or between satellite, those kind of things. Yeah, it could be, could, could, could be done, yeah. Thank you. Uh, this question is to Dora Zhang and Dr. Fran. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the topic is, uh, we are talking about how 5G reshape the electronics industries. Mm. And I would like to say that how 5G can reshape the industries. <laughs> so uh, we are talking 5G when we are talking 5G, IoT, 5G, mm. AI, 5G, yeah. big data, those things. A lot of SME uh, have a lot of concern about the transformation from their current manufacturing structure or facility that they have to a 4G uh, uh, adopted mm. facilities. And their major, major concern is, well, I don't have enough money to do that transformation. Okay, so would you please come up some examples that it doesn't cost so much to an to a SME to do such transformation and that examples may be good for the SME to understand that in future, they don't have the challenges uh, to transform their company to a full, uh, uh, to a better uh, manufacturing facilities. 
Okay, so so from I I can talk about it first. So, uh, in in fact, I think the uh, in Hong Kong the the situation may be a little bit different from different other countries like in China or in Taiwan on all this manufacturing, and I think uh, for in uh, all this communication technology itself, it, it will help uh, all this uh, industry to getting a transformation uh, from something that. Uh, they they really need some manpower uh, in order to to facilitate all this manufacturing to some places to to become automated on on their own manufacturing areas. Uh, we have some partnership with 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 some of the manufacturing partners like Foscon. They try to actually upgrade their whatever their facility uh, to in to in other. Uh, areas that they can actually do a lot of autonomous uh, 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 guided vehicle and to actually helping them to, to speed up their efficiencies. And I think this is a way that people can think of how we can upgrade the existing uh, technology industry to, to getting a benefit of 5G. And the other area that we can think of is uh, how we can um, uh, actually enhancing the the uh, scale of of the, the business that that actually Hong Kong is doing because I think Hong Kong is uh, actually having a uh, very close relationship with GBA and also with the overseas so we, we are talking about all these new circulations and how we can scale up the the whatever that SME is doing in Hong Kong uh, to different places uh, and and this is an also important way that we can putting high tech inside to in order to to make it easy to be scaled to different country. So I think this is more about how the, our Hong Kong uh, industry would think of how to be shape of what it owns uh, and to become something that uh, in including some of the high tech elements in their own uh, uh, facility. Yeah. I, I think on. In addition to Dr. Chiang, I think my, my comment is that uh, I agree that uh, I think we, the SME, uh, rather than sort of uh, affordability, as I said before, uh, we are using standard 5G, not, not those uh, infrastructure, the, the uh, proprietary 5G. Uh, so, so the cost may not be that increased significantly. Like for, for my case, okay, uh, the cost that I add on to the stacker is only $10,000, $20,000 at most. Okay, it's not, not much as, built, as much as $2 million, $3 million, okay. Okay, and in that is, but the value that you put in, they say this amount of money, but you can enhance, you can have more, by using 5G, you get more data, more sen uh, more uh, intelligent, I would say. I would use the word intelligent, intelligent, because you can use the data to turn into intelligence, which can help you to build your business, to enhance your business, to promote your business to people that, hey, I use 5G or uh, some sense of intelligence. Okay, to sell your business to the other people. So I think in terms of, uh, I won't say affordable, I think cost-effective-wise is, is much better, I would say. I will use these wordings, okay, rather than like, just cheap, keep on pushing. I think we have to turn around and saying that uh, we're not doing like 70s, 80s, we're doing too cheap business. We're doing high power, high value business to, 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 promote, to promote our SMEs as well. That's what I, my comment is. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I hope that the, your message uh, already passed through SME, <laughs> and uh, they believe that it can be affordable mm. to do the transformation in the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I think time is uh, coming up, so I, I think we will have a short break and then go to the next session. Uh -oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Let's take a photo together to capture this happy moment. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let's take a break together for 10 minutes. Our next section of presentation will begin at 10 past 4. Please come back on time at 10 past 4. Thank you so much and see you soon. Welcoming Mr. George Lee, Director of Marketing and Solutions Sales Department of Carrier Business Group, Huawei Hong Kong Representative Office. His presentation is 5G Inspires New Value to Accelerate Industry Digitalization. Okay. 
Mr. Lee, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Uh, today, my topic is uh, 5G inspire a new value to accelerate industry digitalization. Okay, I come from Huawei, Hong Kong office. Uh, uh, in the past few years, if we have to choose one of the hottest wars in the telecom communication industry, I think 5G should deserve it. Uh, the reason is not only that uh, Huawei, as the Chinese company, is leading the 5G te technology in the group, but also that 5G has been entrusted with more mission by the, by the industry. Okay, let's look back at the, the telecommunication the, the process. From the uh, 2G warriors to the 3G data germination, 4G data burst, and the 5G, the large-scale commercial use. They always work together with the cloud and AI technology development and uh, evolution. Based on the account of 5G, the development in the globally, it is expected that in 2025, the, the 5G network will cover the 58% of the world's population. At 85% of enterprise application will be cloudification. 97% of the big business will use the AI technology. Okay, we fully believe the 5G, AI, and the cloud converge on the top of the wheel the, and will become the core engine that drive the industry digitalization. We always talk about the 5G can enable the, the, the wide range of the industry, but how 5G can help the global economic development. According to the GSMA the prediction, 5G will drive 5.3% the GDP growth in the next 15 years. With the manufacture account for the 35%. Okay, another thing is the third party data, the PLC, uh, the 5G will bring the additional 1.3 trillion US dollar to the global GDP by 2013, including the smart healthcare, the consumer media, even the industry manufacturing part. <coughs> Let's uh, take a look at the, the development of the 5G 2C business. In the past uh, two years, you can see this picture. Uh, 914 5G devices has been released, including the 415 the 5G smartphone. What's the most uh, exciting thing is the one South Chinese Yuan, the smartphone has been released also. As you know, in the 4G era, the first uh, 4G smartphone, the period from the first uh, 4G smartphone to the uh, one thousand yuan, the smartphone is around the three years. But now, in the 5G era, the period is greatly shorted. Now in China, Mandia, mainland, there is no what we call the killer application. But the mountain port service innovation accelerates the 5G 2C business. Based on the, the, the Chinese the operator, the H1, the, we, we, we can find the revenue uh, increased by 12.7%, 12, 12 and the net profit increased by the 11.3%. This is a very good business. Uh, now in China, already have the 910K 5G site. 
the file is subscribed already have the 495 million. Uh, even that, even we call the DOU increased the three, 33 point percentage. All of this service, like the 5G message, uh, 5G message, because before we call the traditional message, uh, just some wording, okay, now we call the 5G message. Some of the 5G plus the free uh, video, even the little broadband, the AR. All of this, they interest the, the 5G 2C business ecosystem. Uh, even in other country, like Korea, like COVID-19, their 2C business also have the good progress. For the 2B, for the 5G 2P part, <laughs> the development also is fast than we expected. Uh, in the past uh, uh, few years, uh, you will see 5G now is changing our lives as a society. 5G 2B has gone from the innovation to the commercial the, the use. By the end of the 2020, in China, 5G technology has, has been using more than 20 industry and uh, involved over 5,000 commercial projects. Uh, especially in the steel, mining, and manufacturing industry. As we know, the Hong Kong, the most of the Hong Kong now, the 5G2 business is uh, involved in the, the smart healthcare, the, the building, uh, some of the property and the transportation, even uh, the, the port. Uh, but in the electronic industry, how Hong Kong can learn the Chinese mainland, the case. Okay, from the experience of the 5G industry application, uh, most is graduate permit based on the industry requirement. They, we call it there is two phase. Uh, phase one is the, uh, the EMBB feature can meet a large number of the, in, uh, the industry requirement, such as the traditional, what we call the VRAR. Actually, maybe five years already have it, yeah. Even the remote control at auto pilot. In this feature, the main job is like uh, identify uh, the suitable 5G service in the each industry. Uh, those service require request the large bandwidth, low latency, and uh, high reliability. Uh, but in the phase two, the successful 5G to be true industrial application will make a skill replication in the industry. The most of the the application is like the call money, the steel, uh, even in oil and the gas, uh, even some of the medical. In this phase, the, the network requirement maybe is higher than in the phase one. They request the high reliability, wide connection at a higher positioning. In the, because today we talk about the, uh, the electronic uh, industry. So, all of this 5G 2B, the scenario uh, involved in the like uh, AI quality inspection, the data collection and the loading, uh, even some of the cloud-based PLC and the video surveillance. This is all the uh, industry use case. Uh, for the network capability part, they request the large uplink bandwidth the low latency, maybe the, from the 15 to 20 uh, milliseconds, even the high reliability. Uh, and the, they also request the, the MEC, what we call the edge computing. Uh, this is all the use case covering the entire production process, collecting the data and controlling in the real time. Next, I will share the three cases I'm talking about, how 5G can enable the, 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 manu the smart manufacturer and bring the new value to the 5G 2B business. Uh, the first case is RKD. RKD is the, the established in 2003. It's a leading uh, 
automotive aluminum uh, supply in China. In this project, the China Mobile as the general system integrate. Behind the China Mobile, they have the ecosystem. Uh, they have the four company, the, we call the terminal supply. They deploy 600 plus terminal and uh, even has the AI application platform at the cloud, uh, cloud platform, but the, the, the China Mobile use their own the plan, uh, the cloud platform. Hmm. China Mobile provides the system integration service to the IKD and sign the cooperation contract. Uh, in this project, the service of the 24% 20, uh, provided by 5G network. Uh, the remaining part is the application and the integration. Uh, IKD Smart Factory as it was the first full 5G connector factory. They use the 5G network to collect all the equipment, machine, and the robots, and they collect all the production process data uh, to implement the safety and surveillance to ensure the AI product quality inspection. Uh, in their factory, 2,000 equipment and 300 robots, even they have the 2,000 5G terminals, all is connected by the 5G network. The full 5G connect digital factory, the, the left side, uh, they improve the, the IKD, the yearly production by 15%. In 20, okay, this is the prediction. Huh? And the same product turnover by 70%. And another, and another thing is 5G plus the AI product quality inspection improves the, the production process efficiency by 85% and reduce the product defect rate by 15%. This is the, the, the IKD, the success for the, the case. The second one, uh, I would like to introduce the Foshan Meidi. Uh, Meidi is, the, is a very uh, big company, I think everyone should know it. Uh, they have eight workshops, nearly 10 employees. Uh, in their factory, they have the 59 assembly line, and uh, every year they can produce the 40 million unit. In 2009, the revenue reached to the 2 billion USD dollar. But in the daily production process, they face a lot of the business pay point. Firstly, is the flexibility. You know, the, the, the user requirements are always changing. So, the MIDI how to change or do some adjustment to meet the user requirement. So the per year, per line, have the 12 times. So the investment every year over the, uh, the 6 million Chinese yuan. Another thing is the logistic efficiency. You know the traditional the Wi-Fi network is unstable, uh, unstable, and the locating is not a, it's not a supported also. Uh, even the the latency is very very huge um, compared to the 5G network. Hmm. Another thing is the for the wireless requirement. The the traditional wireless production terminals are based on the wired networks. So when they want to do some of the adjustment, you will find it's very difficult to maintain as the cost is very, very huge also. So based on all of this, the BNC pay points, we use the 5G, the network, to cover the entire production process, including the past production, the product assembly, and the warehouse, and the warehouse. In this case, they have the 11 types of 5G scenario, uh, such as the, uh, the 5G AI quality inspection, 
for the, for the schools on the bottom plate. 5G cloud-based PLC timbre and the 5G lab air quality inspection, uh, even some the, for the cutters. This system calls end-to-end -to -end the, the MIDI, the, the products process, and can effectively resolve the, the, the pinpoint that MIDI fits in the business before. The final case is Huawei Dongguan 5G smartphone pro the, the production process. Uh, in this case, it has eight application scenario and uh, 14 file use case to cover all the manufacture process. It is true that the 5G smartphone is manufactured by 5G Networks. I will share the. I will share the video. This is Huawei's 5G yes. factory. It's a high-speed assembly line rammed full of precision equipment. But looking around, assembly line workers are few and far between. The people you can see, they're mostly computer technicians. There's a good reason for this because this 5G assembly line is doing things a little bit differently. A mobile phone production line consists of four steps. Assembling the PCB, assembling the phone, testing the phone, and packaging. Each step must be monitored and passed by quality control. The Mate 40 has proven so popular that this factory in Dongguan had to quickly convert other production lines to keep up with demand. Traditionally, this would involve a complete reconfiguration of the entire production line, starting with new production equipment and PLCs, programmable logic controllers. They need configuring, they need calibrating, they need debugging, they need testing and plugging into a wired network to carry all of the signals. This all takes time and a lot of labor. But this factory does things a little differently. It all starts with a 5G mobile network covering the entire campus and replacing tens of thousands of meters of network cables and hundreds of network switches. Now hundreds of production devices from many different manufacturers are connected over the 5G network and then mixed and matched flexibly to make the new Mate 40 production line. But it's not just about the network. The PLCs for each device have been sent into the cloud and the devices can now be commissioned, configured and scheduled centrally. The 5G network, working with the cloud, guarantees industry-grade reliability and a reduction in latency, enabling plug-and-play provisioning. Cloud PLCs and the 5G network means that this production line can be configured and reconfigured in record time. What used to take weeks can now take place in less than one. It also means that in the future, this self-sane mass production line can be reconfigured for small batches of products. Now this could never happen before. Every step of the Mate 40 manufacturing process requires quality assurance to ensure that the phone in your pocket is made to the highest possible standard. Now this area here is where the quality assurance of the phone's printed circuit board takes place. You'll see the printed circuit board is tiny, the components are tiny, and the soldering is done to a very fine degree of detail. Now, traditionally, the quality assurance of the printed circuit board was carried out using a device called the Automatic Optical Quality Inspection Device, which, despite the name, required frequent manual intervention. Thankfully, 5G and AI have come to the rescue. Together, they're delivering a great leap in the efficiency of our quality assurance processes along the entire production line. Now, this ultra-high definition camera sends eight pictures a second to the cloud, where the images are inspected by AI and the PCB is passed to the next stage. But it doesn't end there. Over time, machine learning in the cloud improves the accuracy of the image recognition and the improved inspection standard is automatically and consistently applied across every Mate 40 production line. The Mate 40, quality assured by AI over 5G. Don't you want one now? The 
production line makes a new Huawei Mate 40 every 28 and a half seconds. Each one is comprised of about 2,500 individual components. The factory as a whole also makes Huawei's other phones and also our base stations. Can you imagine the complexity of the logistics and the supply chains to ensure the right component arrives at the right production line at the right time? It used to take a small army of administrators and workers to manage all these materials, and any mistake or delay could result in the costly shutdown of entire production lines. Now, these autonomous guided vehicles do the job managed over the 5G network by AI in the cloud. They receive the requirements from the production line, locate the materials from the store, and deliver them just in time to ensure continuous production. Okay, so that's the, that's the real, the, Hua, the Huawei 5G the, uh, smartphone uh, production line. Uh. So, uh, we involved the 5G 2B project around the two years, around two years. Actually, we faced a lot of the difficulties. Uh. Uh, based on our e experience, uh, we found the five, the five key role is very important in the every the the to be project, to be project. Okay, so I show the the five key roles here. Uh, the first that we call the add user, uh, add user. So they may they may, may care about like okay where to get the end to end solution. Okay, how about the five G the network reliability, uh, even. That, that we talk about how about the service and the data security, uh, it's safe or not. Another thing is that they think, okay, how about the, the, the ROI? It's, it's worth to pay or not. Uh, okay, this is uh, for the, from the IDU, they may care about things. Uh, the second one is for the, the system integrate. Uh, the most uh, should be like operators. Uh, you know, from the operator side, they may care about, okay, where to buy a product or service. You see, before I show the three keys, uh, if you want to use the 5G equipment to call the end to end the product line, sometimes it's 600 or 2,000 or 5,000 the, the equipment. So get, how to get all of this one? Uh, this one is very important. Okay, where's the, the operators, the partner, and the supply and the devices? Another thing, how to define the service interface of the each party, even how to ensure the business profit. The operator also needs to get the money, get the profit from every project. Uh. Another the role is the, the network uh, operators, like, uh, like Huawei, uh, our role. Uh. We may care about the, the network SRA assurance. Even sometimes we have to meet the self-management and the self-maintenance uh, requirements of the enterprise. Uh, of course, we, we, we need the partner also to provide the industrial application. Uh, so only the, the file key role work together can enable the, 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 the successful 5G to be business. Okay, in summary, for the 5G, the manufacturer uh, should uh, include the three parts. The first one is one network, uh, contain two parts. One is the internet, another one is the devices, like the interactive devices, production, uh, even the logistic, and some of the security and the protection equipment. For the network part, it's okay, 5G network is very important. Uh, even the AI, F5G, uh, and so on. Uh, second one is uh, what do we call the two clouds. Two clouds. Intelligent cloud platform at MEC. You know the high the performance edge cloud uh, is is the foundation for building the full factor awareness. Uh, okay, the computing storage network security also is the necessary for the for the MEC part. The third one we call the three convergency. Uh, okay, for this part, the data, the data 
uh, this platform is very important. Uh, it's very important. Another one is use the, how to use the AI technology. Uh, use the AI technology. The third one is the is the is the application. Is application. Uh. So only these three platform work together can make the new what we call the new collection, new platform and the new convergency. Through the one network, two clouds, and the three convergency to help the enterprise to transform to the, the new digitalized platform and bring the new value to the to the industry. Uh. So okay this is the the, the final pitch. This is the final pitch. Actually, uh, before I see some of the presentation, we call the ecosystem. Uh, ecosystem is very important. Ecosystem. So, the the GSMA, uh, GSMA as the standard organization, the they was they established the uh, what, what we call the APAC community in the Asian area. They already have some of the operators and uh, industry customers, even some of the government entities join the, the community already. Uh. So in the future, this community will continue to uh, hold some of the summit and even have some of the industry resource to work together. Okay, so today I would like to share this one to all the Operators, uh, the, even the industry customer, uh, the, the government association. If you are interested, you can sc scan the QR code to join the community. I think it should be useful for the Hong Kong, the Fuji to be business. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Please be seated. So now, let's jump to the panel discussion. Same as the first section, our moderator will ask a few questions and then open to the Q&A section to the floor. So don't be shy and raise your hand if you have any question. Now, may I invite our moderator, Professor Andrew Young, Project Committee member of Symposium. Together with two speakers, including Mr. George Lee, Director of Marketing and Solutions Sales Department of Career Business Group, Huawei Hong Kong Representative Office, and also Mr. Sam Lam, Business Development Manager, China Mobile Hong Kong. Now, I'm going to give the floor to Professor Yang to lead the discussion. Professor Yang, please. Thank you. Um, they all often say the second session is uh, people fall away, but second session is just exciting, especially we see the, the Huawei factory, which you're saying, wow. I mean, that was certainly something, something very, very exciting for us to see. And uh, we also see the CMHK profile in Hong Kong helping all industries, so it's certainly very, very impressive for us. Um, I, I think we'll, I want to leave the question more to the floor, so I may just ask each one of you a question. So for George, the um, I think that the factory. I mean, I've been to see, I've been to see um, Industry 4.0 factories in Germany, but I would say you guys probably outplay Germans in terms of doing high speed, you know, uh, larger scale, smaller scale electronic products. So that that video was very very impressive to represent what you're doing, but. There's a lot of reliance on cloud-based network infrastructure. Now, my, my question is, is there a greater danger of cross-contamination and data leakages? So what measure <coughs> does the Huawei network uh, takes to secure those data for users? Okay, okay. Security, uh, actually, security is very, very interesting, the, the, the topic. Uh, especially in the, I mean, in the past uh, the three years, uh, in the past three years. Actually, I think, uh, because you see, before I share the, the, the case, uh, a lot of the factory already use the, the 5G te technology. Uh, uh, but in my, in my the experience, 
actually some in the 4G era, I mean not in the in the 5G era, in 4G era, uh, we already use the what we call the cloud-based technology. Uh, you know the we we work together with a lot of the operator uh, to to provide those service to provide this service. You know the actually for the security the first is we call the the standard standard ETSA. I think everyone know it. Mm -hmm. uh, ETS is responsible for the for the security standard for the network side for the network side. Uh, why we uh, work together? Even we follow ETS as a standard. Like we we have the EP uh, EPS nine EPS two. Uh, always follow this standard. This is the first thing. Mm -hmm. Second one is like uh, is like the how to say. For example, you know. For the end-to-end -end network side, we can separate to the different part. Uh, for the different part, for example, for the operation at the manager, uh, the uh, the department. Okay, we also can separate the their authority to the different part. Okay, you can control or you can control the access. I think this is very easy to do it. This is the second thing. Third one. Actually, Huawei also developed a lot of the, I mean, enhancing the security measure to the operator's network. Uh, not only the hardware side, even for the software side, we do a lot of things to make sure the customer network is safety. Even the user, the data will not be leaked also. Uh, especially, I mean, you know, now in the Europe, they always use this, you know, use this, the, the security to do a lot of things, but now we are we are working together to do this one. I think it should be okay. Thank okay. you. This is my <coughs> answer. That's yes, very yeah. Certainly, uh, certainly. I, th I think you know. Uh, I think a lot of people doesn't know that Huawei has a big R&D lab in Hong Kong. They're actually very humble. Uh, in fact, both organizations have a innovation lab here in at the Hong Kong Science Park. So, so I, gu I guess uh, you guys are really helping a lot. Uh, of the electronic industry to grow forward. And my next question for you, Sam, is on one of our slides, you show different uh, CMHK networks supporting different industry. So, and I know one of the very impressive project that you guys are doing collectively <coughs> is the autonomous driving vehicle in, at the airport. But what do you see, which industry, because at the moment, uh, there's a, still not a real big wow uh, apps or somebody that we can use um, 5G network. So which industry sector would you predict will be will take off in Hong Kong in a big way for, for 5G? I said it. Mm. Yeah. My construction site will be a really big thing going on, especially right now uh, our chief executive already planning to going to develop the northern metrop metropolitan district. Mm -hmm. And then land town, reclaiming the land, we are going to have see a lot of construction site in the future. And uh, workers' life and their safety is the most important thing for a construction site. Mm -hmm. And I see there's more development in terms of CCTV, smart helmet, and the smart watch that protecting the mm -hmm. uh, workers' uh, safety uh, mm -hmm. that have already deployed and have a... Uh, uh, robust solution, and I believe uh, that will be the big solution in the uh, future. Right, because we know construction industry is a pretty very large part of Hong Kong GDP, employs a lot of people, and as construction workforce is getting older, the need for technology to supplement and to attract our young people into the industry is, and really that becomes an opportunity for members of the electronic industry that we can produce products that can match to the 5G network to, to, for this industry. Very good. Now, I know in the scheme of, <clears throat> in the interest of time, maybe now we'll open the questions to the floor. So anyone like to ask uh, both speakers any questions? So please raise your hand. Our colleagues would have a microphone for you. Uh, 
Well, well, I have a question for Huawei. Is that I see Huawei offer a very special uh, 5G lines, the production line of the uh, Matic, okay? They are big, big company. They can pay. However, for the SMC, I'm a small company. What Huawei can offer to them? Uh, mm, okay, before I would like to say, uh, in the past two years, as I said, Huawei involved a lot of the industry to select the customer, which industry maybe is more suitable for the 5G to be minutes. So I have to see in the in the initial phase, we we have to do some of the choice. Okay, so before when we defined some of the industry, maybe in the initial phase, maybe it's suitable for the 5G technology. But some of the, as you said, maybe SME, some of the small, small, I mean small factory or small company, maybe in this time it's not good for, for let them to use the 5G. Okay, this is the first thing I want to share, uh, share to you. Second one, for the MSA, but how can we do it? Okay, actually, before Huawei develop and research all the not only the I mean the 5G technology, even what we talk about the terminal, uh, the what we some of the some of the connected the devices, some of the 5G CPE, maybe two or three years, the cost is very huge. Even you see now in Hong Kong the. Uh, I see almost the most, I mean, a lot of the operator already provides the FWA service. They just uh, put a CP in your home. Okay, you, they can provide the broadband. You know, before, I remember three years before the, that CP, the price over 5,000, sometimes maybe 1,000 US dollar. But now, the price already less than one, maybe 115 US dollar. Okay, this is the first thing I want to share. Another thing is, okay, for some other devices, I mean, maybe used in the factory, the cost is, is decreased also. So what I want to sh say is like, uh, as more and more, the bigger company use the 5G technology. And uh, the, ecos the ecosystem become mature. I fully believe what you mentioned, the SME can use it also in that time. But uh, it's not mean that this time, the SME, how to use it. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a long time. It's a long time. Okay, this is my answer. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, please. I get a question to uh, Huawei. Uh, because Thank Huawei provides the infrastructure for the smart manufacturing. So I, uh, this, well, we just provide the infrastructure for the conductivity, or you work with the equipment manufacturer or even do the MES supplier to provide the total solution. Uh, okay. Okay. This uh, okay. This one is like this. Actually, before in my presentation, I share uh, in our experience, there is the five key roles. I mean, in every five G. I mean, smart manufacture. Uh, two years before, what do we call the SI? I mean, the, we, we do some of the, the integration. Uh, actually, in the, in the beginning, Huawei is that role. It's not the operator, uh, especially in the, in the Chinese mainland. Uh, because you know, in that time, many operator don't have the capability to do the end-to-end -end solution. Mm -hmm. So in that time, Huawei is the system integrate. We have to involve the, all the supply, like, uh, okay, CP provider, like the system uh, provider, even the AI and the cloud. That is two years before Huawei how to do it, provide end-to-end. -end. But now, the thing is better than before. So what we call the, now the operator already become the system integrate. Huawei, most of time, we are, 
we are behind the operate. We are behind the operate. So we provide the network and uh, even the architecture side. Uh, this is what we are do, doing now. But maybe in, in other country, I mean, excluded the, the Chinese mainland, in, in Europe or in other country, maybe Huawei still is a system integrate. We provide end-to-end -end solution. Because what we are doing is uh, we hope by the, our effort, we can enrich the 5G to be the ecosystem. Uh, this is our the vision. Uh, okay, so that means uh, we are the equipment manufacturer, supplier, yeah. and also the MDS supplier. So even though we are your supplier as well, so we can leverage your infrastructure or your ecosystem, the 5G ecosystem, to implement the smart manufacturing yes. solution. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Right, okay, so um, in the interest of time, so would like everyone to give a hand to thank the two speakers for an excellent presentation and the present exchange. Oh, sorry, one more, right, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm still thinking, digesting the, the, the questions and answers just now. And I, I have uh, uh, one question for both. Uh, first, the Huawei. Uh, uh, that production line is uh, magnificent. But then uh, there are so many machines uh, each of them are they talking directly to the uh, big, uh, the base station of 5G? Do you have to pay the data cost for each machine? How that would be a, a huge uh, running cost uh, uh, bill for 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 the for uh, I'm sure China Mobile will be very happy because actually they'll charge you a dis <laughs> they'll charge you a discount they'll give you a good discount price sorry okay or or do you have some small cell that the, the, the uh, factory can install locally in the factory, that uh, the, the communication can be, can be going through the small cell uh, and build a small LAN that uh, cut the, the, the data bill. Uh, of course, I would like to have this come from, from China Mobile, uh, but I'll, I'll ask, ask that uh, later on. But first, do Huawei offer this kind of hardware local LAN? And then for China Mobile, do you have special discount for this kind of uh, data for machine and we are uh, my company is uh, considering to uh, uh, replace our conventional ERP system from a uh, which is using a uh, uh, I don't know a lease line uh, between our factory in China and Hong Kong uh, we are considering cloud but then the the it also involves a lot of uh, data communication from the cloud to 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 our system well, so, if we use 5G, that, uh, it, that, fact, uh, that bill will be huge again. So do you have any discount so that we can replace our lease line to use uh, uh, that? That so. would be the SD1 solution. We do provide that software-defined network. Uh, that would be at a cheaper rate, and it is more cost-efficient than the lease line. But the second question, first question will be the MEC solution, which is Huawei will provide that solution that everything can operate locally without, uh, uh, without us charging you with a really expensive uh, mobile fee. <laughs> the, oh, that, that, that is uh, very good. And uh, uh, other than machine operation, can, can I request uh, China Mobile to, to uh, uh, install a Fanduel cell in our office or, or in our factory? Uh, or even if you pay the rents to me, <laughs> instead of me paying to you. Do you have that kind of uh, plans or things like that? We can definitely provide a consultation put a service. <laughs> and then charge. cooperate with uh, Huawei, they will provide the hardware, uh, uh, hardware um, uh, service. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. One last question, Thank Chris, you. as the... Uh, Chairman of this organizing committee, you have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Well, I have a question for Sam. Uh, when uh, doing the transition from 4G to 5G, what would be the commercial challenge that uh, uh, the mobile networking company uh, are encountering? Definitely finding, uh, uh, dealing with the land law. Uh, our uh, difference between the other two uh, free operators is that 
two of them are um, real estate uh, giant owned gas company, like Hutchison and Smart Tone. They are owned by the real estate company. So they definitely have advantage than that. And Hong Kong Tea have been long operating in uh, uh, Hong Kong for 100 years already. So they have all the basic infrastructure versus we are just 20 years old in Hong Kong. So uh, definitely a building sales site is uh, difficult for us, but we just have our uh, uh, work uh, license two years ago. So in the next 10 years, we will be light laying down all the fiber all over in Hong Kong and implement the 5G or the 6G uh, cell station. So uh, please be patient, we will be catching up. <laughs> Okay. Right, so in coming to sessions like this, you hear very good technical information and knowledge. You also get discounts from our operators, so you get both. So let's give a hand to both speakers and for this session. Thank you. Thank you, oh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Yao, Mr. Lam, and Mr. Lee. Let's take a picture together. Thank you all. Please be seated. Now, may I invite Dr. Alfred Ng, Vice Chairman of Hong Kong Electronics Industry Council, to deliver the closing remarks for us. Dr. Ng, please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you who are present here. I hope everyone has been enjoying the event and has, and has learned more about 5G from the speakers. I would like to express my gratitude to all the distinguished speakers. Your presence has been invaluable and has helped make the symposium a great success. The prevailing trend of 5G is irresistible and in significance will only keep growing. Not only 5G leads to a change on infrastructure and contribute to the development of massive IoT, but it also creates a new wave of business opportunities to electrical company industry. From today's symposiums, I believe that all of you should already develop several ideas in mind concerning the 5G technologies. Let's embrace the arrival of the 5G era and take the opportunity to upgrade our living standard and competitiveness of the electronic industries. Apart from today's symposium, we are now collaborating with Hong Kong Applied Science and Technology Research Institute, S3, to work on an in-depth research study on 5G IoT applications. The research report will be presented in the second 5G symposium in May 2022. We will also arrange factory visits to, uh, to observe successful business models from the leading global electronics companies. Stay tuned for the coming event it, and it is anticipated that all our industry stakeholders can adapt to it and can grow and thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Please be seated. Let's give another round of applause to all our speakers and guests today for their wonderful sharing. Thank you so much. So to help us continue to improve, please scan the QR code on your badge or on a screen to fill in the questionnaire so that we can have your feedback and we can improve. And all the highlights of today's symposium will be uploaded onto the web page. You may also scan another QR code on the screen or in your badge for more information. So ladies and gentlemen, here comes to the end of today's event. I hope all of you enjoy today's program. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you again in future FHAI's events. Thank you, and have a good night.